What's up guys, welcome to a brand new video. Today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. We're gonna be doing a, a q and A. I I asked you guys on social media to ask me a bunch of questions. So I'm gonna be answering 20 of your questions. Let's do it. <laughs> Question number one, at what age did you start? And what was the reason why you started kite surfing? So I started kite surfing when I was eight years old. Uh, the main reason was my dad was a kite surfer and before that he was a windsurfer. So my dad was always in the water, he was a waterman and I'd seen him kite from a very young age. So naturally I was inspired by him and I asked him, I think from around the age of six, uh, can I try kite surfing? And obviously I was very young at the time so I had to wait a few years to be heavy enough. And yeah, then finally at the age of, of eight, I took my first lesson here in Tarifa and the rest is history. Question number two, what do you prefer, freestyle or big air? That's a tough question. Um, I think I enjoy them equally as much. Definitely doing a lot more big air for the last few years, but um, I grew up doing freestyle. That was the most important discipline for the most part of my career. And I enjoyed every single step of the way, competing, landing world's firsts, and having you know, a lot of crazy sessions and being at the top level of that. Um, for the last few years, though, I think there's been a lot more hype around Big Air, there's been more competitions and yeah, it was just something new for me, something exciting. So now I'm enjoying Big Air a lot more, but uh, over the course of my career, I think I've enjoyed them equally as much. Question number three, best spot you've ever visited for kite surfing? I think my favorite spot to kite surf in the world is the northeast of Brazil. You have so many diversity of conditions. You have light winds, strong winds, waves, flat water, and the temperature is amazing. And that whole coast is basically built around kite surfing. So there's loads of cool little kite surfing towns along the way where the vibe is just really cool. Everybody's there to do the same thing, progress and have fun. So yeah, I'd say Brazil is my favorite spot in the world. Question number four. What's the most important thing you've learned about yourself through years of ups and downs? Um, that's a tough one. I think the most important thing that I've learned about myself over the years has been to not put too much pressure on myself. I feel like I've lived inside of my head and I've lived under pressure my whole life. And you know, sometimes that takes the enjoyment out of things. And sometimes I have to remind myself why I started this in the first place. I started it because it's fun and it's what I love to do and that has been the main motivation for me over the course of the years and that's what's helped me continue to progress just having a lot of fun enjoying what i do and i think if you you enjoy yourself out there on the water you're bound to progress and you're bound to get to where you want to be so yeah just keep reminding myself why i do it and continuing to have fun question number five what achievement are you most proud of the achievement I'm most proud of is becoming world champion. It was quite a few years ago now, at the age of 18, but also leading up to that, it was a childhood dream of mine since, since I can remember. And it was very progressive and it came very quickly. Um, but also in general, I think just making my passion into my job has definitely become, definitely is a dream come true, being able to do that and you know, do what I love every single day and, and make a living out of that. That's uh, something I think very few people can do. Question number six, nutritional advice and workout routine. My nutritional advice is to keep things as balanced as possible. Don't eat too much of anything um, and eat a little bit of everything. Obviously there's some people that eat meat and others that don't. Me personally, I eat pretty much everything, um, but I don't go too crazy on the meat. I don't eat many processed foods or much sugar. And yeah, just keep it balanced, a little bit of everything. Um, and in terms of, of working out and workout routines, I don't lift too many weights. I try to, to do things that have a lot of mobility and keep my body moving in all different kinds of positions. So a lot of func functional training, a lot of flexibility, a lot of balance work and yeah, putting my, myself in, in positions or situations that can mimic what I do in my sport. 
Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Question number seven. Which elements of an athlete's state of mind would you recommend to someone who wants to achieve their goals? I think definitely consistency and determination and keeping it fun would be the three things that I'd recommend. Um, consistency, if you do something every day and you work at a goal every day for a long period of time, you're definitely gonna get to where you wanna get or at least you're gonna get closer to it. Determination, you know, being determined on that goal, no matter what the circumstance is, no matter how you're feeling, just keep on grinding at it. And keeping it fun, I think is very important as well, because as soon as you lose the fun in, in doing things, you're gonna get less far. You're not gonna do it with joy or, or pleasure, so you're not gonna put in that 150% that you might, might put in if you're enjoying yourself. So I think uh, those, those three ingredients are super important for your mindset. Question number eight. If you had any recommendations for getting sponsors, what would they be? I think what sponsors look for in an athlete is how can they get value out of that athlete. So I think when you approach a, a brand, you have to think, how can I be valuable to that brand? Um, it may be being at, your, at the top of the game in competitions, it may be being really good with your, your social media and your image in general. So I think it's a bit specific depending on what brand you're trying to approach. But in general, um, just being a, a brand face, which means you know, always being the nicest guy at the beach, being good with, with content and media, smiling in front of the camera and, you know, being able to, to speak in front of a camera as well and, and to people in general. And of course, being very good at your craft, whatever that may be, and, and showing that you, that you take it professionally and seriously. Question number nine, favorite kite size and which conditions? So my favorite kite size for Big Air is an eight meter. Right now I, I love my Evo SLS or the Rebel SLS, those are my two favorite kites. And the conditions, 35 knots plus, big waves. Uh, my favorite spot in the world is probably Balneario where the waves are coming against the wind so it gives that extra tension in the, the lines and you can just really load that pop up as hard as possible and just send it. So uh, yeah, those are my favorite conditions and my favorite kites. Question number 10. What size board are you riding and length of lines? The board that I'm currently riding is a 136 centimeters um, and the lines I'm riding are 22 or 24 depending a little bit on the, on the conditions. If I want to be a bit more aggressive and get that kite lower, I tend to ride uh, 22 meter lines and the 24 meter lines I tend to ride when I'm trying out new tricks. I don't want the kite to pull as hard. Also, on my smaller sizes for the double loops, I also ride longer lines. Question 11, which duotone kites would you recommend for a beginner? The duotone kite that I would recommend for a beginner is the Neo or the Neo SLS. This kite is really, really easy to use, super easy to control. It's very light in the sky. It only has three struts. The relaunch is really easy and yeah, overall, it's just a, a very user-friendly kite to use. Question 12. Rebel or Evo for progression with your first jumps? I'd say the Rebel is the most straightforward, easiest kite to use for your first jumps because it's literally just pull the bar in and, and take off. Um, that's the great thing about the Rebel. It's such an easy kite to use. It has great hang time and pretty much anyone can jump on it. Question 13. Are the Evo and the Evo SLFs good kites for looping? 100%. Uh, the Evo and the Evo SLS are great, great kites to do kite loops with. The SLS obviously being a little bit higher performance, uh, it turns a bit quicker as it's lighter, but the Evo works perfectly well as well. Super light bar pressure, very quick turning through the sky. And yeah, it has great hang time as well. So the kite will catch you and you won't have a hard landing. Question 14, 
Why did you use the Rebel SLS in the Megaloop Challenge instead of the Evo D-Lab? So, I ended up using the Rebel SLS in the Megaloop Challenge, um, mainly because the conditions were super crazy and I felt like I could loop the kite a bit lower. Um, a big reason as well is that the Rebel has five struts and the Evo has three struts. So when the wind is really strong and gusty, the, the Rebel is a little bit more stable in the sky and it holds its shape better. So yeah, those were the two main reasons. Uh, the stability of the kite and looping the kite a bit lower. Question 15. How do you know where the kite is when rotating during a kite loop? The only way to know where the kite is when you're rotating is is having a lot of feeling and this comes with years and years of practice. So the more kite loops you do and the more you kite in general, the better feel you have for your kite so you can know where it is in the sky at all times. And yeah, the more experience you have, the more rotations you can add and the less you have to, to look at your kite and the more you can feel it. Question 16. How did you deal with not being able to kite while trying to recover from an injury? I'd say it's probably been the most challenging few months of my life, trying to deal with not kite surfing and not being able to do much sport in general. It's been hard because sport occupies so much of my life that when that's taken away from me, there's you know a lot of extra time, not really knowing what to do. But I'd say distraction has been the, the key element to getting through this, finding different things that, to do that I can do at the moment, like using my mind a bit more, reading books, spending time with, with loved ones, family and friends. Um, obviously, I've been traveling a lot less, so I have a lot more time to do that now. And yeah, and then when I finally started to be able to get into sport again, trying to find sports that are a bit more uh, chilled on the body. Surfing, for example, there's not much impact, so I was able to start doing that. and that would definitely take my mind off things. So I'd say finding things that keep your, yourself distracted and keep your mind off of your injury is the best way to go. Question 17, are you ready to compete again? So I'm not quite ready to compete again. Um, not now and probably not for the next few months. I plan hopefully to compete at the end of the year if it's possible, but um, yeah, only time will tell. Uh, for now, I'm concentrating on the present moment, taking things day by day, doing as much as I possibly can, but um, I, don't, I can't tell how my body's gonna react over the next few months. So, yeah, my mind wants to compete, and let's see what happens with my body. <laughs> Question 18. Who is your favorite kite surfer at the moment? It's hard to say. There's loads of different riders that I appreciate and respect for different elements that they have inside of their riding. Um, obviously, competition-wise, Andrea, Lorenzo, they're absolute machines, and you know they're doing everything possible to, to be at the top of the podium. But there's different people who I like because of their style. I love Edgar's style. I love Jeremy's style. I love Gil for his, his determination and, and consistency and putting in more work than anyone else. So. Yeah, there's a bunch of different riders that I like for different reasons. Question 19. What are your plans for the rest of the year? So the plans for the rest of the year for now is obviously recover 100%, get my back to where it wants to be. But I think in the process of getting there, there's a lot of different things that I can do. Um, and one of them that I really enjoy doing is focusing on, on creating content and making fun videos and vlogs. Maybe the action is not gonna be as extreme as it was in the past, at least for now. But I wanna tell stories, I wanna to go to really cool, exciting new places that I haven't been before and just enjoy the ride. Question 20. If you could give one piece of advice, what would it be? Uh, the piece of advice that I would give would be set yourself goals, visualize, uh, where you want to be in a near future, in a far away future, but do not live in the future. Enjoy every single moment because, yeah, nothing, nothing lasts forever. And wherever you are at the moment, whether you're in a really good place or a really bad place, 
you can find something positive out of it. For me, I've been in, you know, in a shitty situation for the last few months, but every day I tell myself that the work that I'm putting in today is going to have a positive effect on my future. So that's the way I want to live life, enjoy every single moment, always have goals, always have a, a purpose in your life that you're thriving for, but remember, remember to be present as well.